What's up everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be having some fun getting down to a little bit of the science of K. We're going to be talking about potassium, why, how, how much to apply, all kinds of fun stuff like that. And um, hopefully give some perspective on a few things so that you guys can really get it and understand when, where, and why you need to get it out and how much is important. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. What's up everybody? All right, so so often we're just sitting there talking about nitrogen this, nitrogen that. And for the next little bit, I wanna run through a couple of things. I wanna do, uh, talk about potassium today. I wanna spend a little bit of time on my next video talking about phosphorus. And then I've got some good subsequent ones lined up to show how to use certain things and build a program. And it'll be fun. So subscribe, make sure you're on it because there is actually some pretty cool videos right coming up pretty close to back to back here that I think everybody's gonna be wanting to, uh, to pay attention to. Let's talk K. First and foremost, there are certain parts of the country and there is a map shown here that is going to give you sort of an idea of where there is a surplus of K, where there's sort of an average amount of K, where there's low K across the country. If you happen to find yourself in any of these sort of low K areas, that's okay to have low K, we're gonna be okay. So the reason is everything can be supplemented and it can be supplemented very easily. But let's go ahead and take my lawn for example. Now, as you can see behind me, in my opinion, I still think it looks terrible. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I scalped it down, it's growing back in because I reset it to a low height but it takes a little while to get back there because I did let it grow up into a little bit taller, you know, blade for a little while and then I came in and just whacked it down. So it's short, I don't love it. It's still weed free, it's growing fine. It's actually growing really fast, it's being mowed every day. But here's why I bring my lawn up, not just because it's my lawn, because of this. My soil report for this lawn shows that I have around 550 parts per million of potassium. 550 parts per million. If you're gonna do the math on that, that's around 1,100 pounds per acre, which ends up equating out to like 25 pounds of K per thousand square feet. Here, right here. That's a lot. Is that causing any other damage to anything else? Let me just sort of fill that in for a second. It will have a drying effect on the soil. There's no doubt about it. That can actually kind of wick moisture away and cause soil to get hard. It also contributes to a higher pH. So those are a couple of things that when you start getting a jacked up K level that, you know, you're just gonna have to deal with in other ways to balance against it. Point is, I don't need to be putting out any extra K on this. And if I do, it can be really super low rates uh, fully early available, that would be great. If it's not, it's fine. It's gonna add a very tiny bit to the soil and that's just grand. Another thing that I do to sort of maintain that is I recycle grass clippings. I don't let that go. So there is uh, a bit of a turn on the K as well because really back in the old days when they were burning down uh, plants and putting them in pots and boiling it, that's where the term pot ash came from and spreading that out, that was where the potassium load would come from. And we do things a little bit different now and uh, you know, just getting the recycled nutrients from the clippings is really super important. So now, so far, since I have been managing this lawn and built it and did everything else, I've only taken the clippings off one time and they're back there on the hill right now. And I did it because I had to, the grass was too thick. I scalped it down and there were just way too many clippings out. And that's really not gonna show a whole lot of effect here over time. Now, another thing that's going to affect your potassium load and what you need to be paying attention to in your lawn journey is this, your CECs. And it is good to note that as well. In a more coarse textured soil, you're not actually going to need as much K as somebody who has a clay soil. There's a different level based on availability and soil particles and the way the cations exchange that you're going to have to change the amounts that are needed. So say a recommended level on somebody with sand might be between 70 and 90 parts per million, somewhere in there. On a clay soil, it's about twice that. You may, it might be around 180 to 210 recommendation to maintain a good potassium level under a clay versus sand condition. So how is the best way to get to that number? Let's pause here for a second and talk about something. For those of you who found out about the soil test button that's on the Longcology shop, that's shop.longcology.com, I am going to be providing a full, basically 
a recipe off of your soil test. Now, again, I do have preferred labs, but if you've already had a soil test, you can go there and click and come through and send it to me and I will give you a recipe that really is good for about two years for you to take it over amount of time. And honestly, it could be for a longer period than that. And really, soil testing maybe every three years is plenty. Um, that, I don't even know if you need to do it that much, but that's kind of the typical recommendation if you're going to be doing like a nutrient management plan. Every three years is more than enough. So for those of you that did get through there, we have a little problem on the back end. It's getting fixed. I think three or four of you might have clicked through and the, the data didn't quite line up the way that it was supposed to. So bear with us for a second. I'll get all on those and, and everybody will be able to do this relatively quickly. So this leads to a second thing getting the right amount of K out. If in the past I have made recommendations to you based on soil reports, a lot of tests come back with low K. And you'll notice that every single time I get one of those in, I don't recommend products that I manufacture in order to fix K. I've never done that. And there's a reason. Most of the time we are off by pounds per thousand. There isn't a liquid there's not a liquid and I would be absolutely out of my mind to recommend a liquid to raise K levels in the soil that didn't absolutely break the bank. I'll put it an example here. So pretty much everything that we've got in the Greene County line has a very low amount of K and a lot of that is going to be foliarly absorbed and that's what it's in there. It's just sort of to sweeten the plant up. If you've already got high K levels, that works great for you. If you're showing K levels that need one or two pounds of K per thousand square feet, you need to run from any liquid out there because even the highest concentrations of a, a 0027, 0029, 0030, if you put too much of that stuff down, it'll dry the grass out. Now, some of those have good foliar capabilities to go into the plant, but it's not going to change things because the rate on those are like three to six ounces per thousand. So I don't care what the percentage is, you're not getting pounds on the ground, you're getting milliliters at that point. It just isn't going to make a major change for you. So you have to shift your concept of what those percentages mean based against the application rate. For me, most of the time, I am recommending SOP, that's sulfate of potash, 0050. It is typically found at turf supply stores. You would need to go there. It's not something that's going to be on the rack, but that's typically my recommendation to people. And that can come in a flowable powder, which means that you could put it into an ortho cup gun in a backpack sprayer and go out and just do it a bunch of times, or you can get it in kind of a, a prilled form and be able to push it out. But the few people that I have had just get the powdered stuff have had wonderful success throwing a few pounds of it in their backpack and spraying their small lawns and it works great for that. So again, let's put it in perspective. You can buy these liquids that are like a 0029 potassium acetate. That shows, again, super high foliar uptake. It's one of the best ways to get it into the leaf tissue. But the rate is gonna be super low. Again, like say two gallons an acre. If we break that down, you probably have about, I don't know, five pounds roughly in that whole thing maybe six pounds of K across an entire acre. Well, if I'm gonna back that down, I'm gonna get into some pretty low numbers really quick. And I, if I have a deficiency of one or two pounds per thousand square feet, it's never going to get there. So in order to get it there using that liquid, you're gonna spend 40, 50, 60 times the money just to try to get it to where it needs to be in one quick shot. Now, the other thing that I typically recommend is this. I don't recommend making a major change to K right out of the gate. I like to see that staged in over the course of the season. So most of the time, I won't recommend more than a half a pound per thousand any time that a person goes out. But I have seen these soil reports that are off by three or four pounds per thousand. And I'm going to let them take the time to build that up and just keep building and building. So we can easily put out a pound of K. You can but I typically don't recommend going over a half. That's just me. That's just me. I think feeding it in and bringing it up that way is gonna end up ultimately being better, run less risk of uh, potential burn, uh, which does happen even with K, depending on your source, and just kind of be a more safe way to get you to the end result. So let's go back to this sort of sand versus clay thing. Now, my CEC is here are about 25 CEC. It's relatively high. So I've got a good amount of clay in there, good amount of loam. It's, it's good soil. It just is good soil. If I go down to Florida, for instance, I'm going to have a much coarser soil in most of those conditions. I'm going to have extremely high amount of FOSS and I'm going to be low on K pretty much across the board everywhere you go down there just due to the solubility 
and what can move in and out of that soil relatively quickly. So while you don't need as much down there because the soil particles are bigger and we're talking about cations, so that K is going to attract and it'll, it needs a surface to cling to. So when you have more surfaces to cling to, you can load more K into the soil. When they're bigger particles, you need less. That's really all that means. Again, I run a fairly low nutrient program here. I've got good, healthy soil. I maintain it in a certain way. I mow it every day. I water it when it needs water. I let it stress out. I do all kinds of things because I, you know, I have time and I have curiosity and well, those two things tend to make for some fun. But the reality is this, knowing those K levels to begin with, or just even knowing where you're geographically located, which I hope you can find your way home. I know I've had trouble doing that a couple times, but that's a different story altogether. You can really shape your program based on these sort of geographical things without a soil test and just sort of work through it. However, knowledge is power. You don't have to do a soil test, but I mean, when you take a look at it over the length of time and what you could potentially not be putting down on your lawn, how much money you could be saving, or if you do corrective things, how much you could potentially be saving in the future, just in the cases of uh, overseeding and disease and whatever else, just by really focusing on the nutritional aspect. I think that once every three years is not a whole lot to ask for. So if you figure like a soil test is gonna run something like, you know, 35 bucks or 40 bucks, whatever it might be, and you break that down over the course of a few years, that's, that's really not that much. For as little as $1 a month, you will know what you're supposed to be feeding your lawn. But what really is the importance of K? K is a major stress reliever, and honestly, I use it a lot of the time when there is heavy rainfall. I do like the ability. It is an electrolyte, okay? We're, we're talking about basically a salt that's going down. And it has the ability to manage the uptake of water into the root zone, as well as assist in cellular development, as well as be pulled in with nitrogen as it comes into the leaf tissue, as well as make a sweeter plant with sweeter fruit, and honestly give just a stronger tissue and cell wall so that you don't go through these major highs and lows and crashes when the seasons and the temperatures change. So it is really important to get that out there, and it is really important to not miss that in your program. So oftentimes for a lot of the professionals that are on our program, we supply SOP to them, or if they can get it locally, they do that as well. But that's something that we've been doing for a while for people who really need it. And it's just the easiest way to make major soil corrections and get a great result out of the rest of your program. If you've gone back through the soil series or you've taken a look at the Liebig's barrel, uh, you know, that maybe people think is an antiquated technique, but in all honesty, we want all the links in the chain to be strong. So having correct amounts or amounts in balance going out on a regular basis and, and hitting your feeding schedule right is what's going to keep you from having peaks and valleys in your program. So again, Recycling clippings, that's a huge deal. The more that you can keep things on the lawn, on the lawn that can be decayed and sort of brought back down into itself, the better. But for a lot of people, that means more mowing, okay? Which, if you're on this channel, you must love grass in some way. And what's wrong with that? So the big thing is to just make sure that the, the takedown rate of the soil is moving at the same click as what you're loading back into it from those clippings. It's when we start going beyond that that there becomes a bigger issue. So let's just talk K in simple terms. Again, just so everybody gets a good idea of what they're dealing with and when. When you take a look at a bag of FERT or a bottle of FERT and you're looking at that third number on there, there's your K load. See what that's coming from. Take a look. Is it muriate of potash? Is it KOH? Is it SOP? There's all of these different forms that can be in there. Now you have to look against what the recommended application rate is and what your particular needs are. Because if you could walk into a turf supply store and buy a bag of SOP for say 35 bucks, and let's say you have a 5,000 square foot lawn. All right, so now you have this saying, 35 bucks, 5,000 square foot lawn. And let's say that you have a major K deficiency. Just by buying that bag, you're going to have the possibility, you're not gonna have to use the whole thing, but you're going to have the possibility of putting out five pounds of K per thousand on a 5,000 square foot lawn. 
That's a lot. Probably way more than you're gonna need. So this bag is gonna last you a long time. Now, if you're gonna go buy a gallon or a two and a half gallon of something else that might be 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars a gallon to get, uh, say, a 0029 out, whatever that might be, that's gonna last you a long time, but you're never gonna make the changes to your soil. You'll just never get there. This is why I haven't really put any of those products out. I feel like if you're gonna do justice to the soil system, you need to load it in. And there really isn't a good delivery mechanism for the K to come out in such a high amount that you're gonna get it like you can in a powder or a granular. So that's it. I really don't have much else to say. I really just thought it was a good time to take advantage of a conversation that I've seen pop up kind of all over the place. Share a little bit about how you can get there, shorten the distance, maybe simplify what you're out there searching for, and at the same time, give you just a bit more knowledge as to why and what you should really be looking at in your own soil to help give you the most optimum turf possible. Okay? I'll talk to you guys real soon. See ya.